Okay, so let's do the birds of a feather. I was kind of hoping there would be f a few more birds here, but uh, maybe they'll turn up in a few minutes. Um, okay, so this is what I put on the abstract when I was submitting this talk. Uh, so ASP developers are many but widely dispersed, so we don't get a lot of opportunities to get together and share ideas, but here we are. So uh, the mic is open for anybody who wants to contribute. This isn't uh, about me, um, but I do have a couple of ideas. So this is my kind of outline agenda. Happy to add things in as we go. Um, uh, so these are the topics that I really wanted to or th thought would be great to talk about. So top of my list is community. How do we uh, get some kind of community uh, behind AOSP? Um, so I'll, I'll, I've got a couple of slides on that and we'll come on, on to that moment. Then other topics I've thought of is, um, what is your, where do you go to get information about AOSP? Is it source.android.com or is it some... Uh, some people you happen to know, or is there some magic link that nobody else knows about that we all should know? Um, uh, and any, any conferences which cover AOSP topics would be great as well. Um, any experiences on, on porting um, AOSP? So issues to do with board support packages, um, which build tag do you use? Actually, that's the next, next uh, topic, but uh, how do you find a good version of AOSP? Um, and then as a final thing, yeah, what, what are your main grumbles about AOSP? Uh, don't, don't want this to be particularly negative, but no, there are pain points. So what are the pain points that you experience and um, do you know ways around them? Do you know where the neurofen is? Um, so just to get things rolling then, I just want to do this slide and the next slide and then, and then we'll, we'll kind of open it up a little bit. So. Uh, open source, really, in my opinion, is um, at least 50%, but it's 90% community. The whole point of open source is that there is a community, we can come together, we can share code, we can communicate about things, we can share bugs, people can patch, post patches, uh, and so on and so on. And the way that AOSP is structured, none of that happens, or at least none of it happens easily. Um, and I'm going to call out Google here. Google are a little bit absent here. So there is um, this community page, which hopefully this is going to work. So Android community and contacts. Um, somewhere there's some AOSP stuff. Uh, Android.com. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so what I was going to say, yeah, groups, here we go. So there are a whole bunch of groups like Android Platform, uh, Android Building, and whatever. But if you go to these groups, there's basically nothing happening. Um, and that, that kind of bugs me. Oops, wrong way. Um, yeah, it'd be nice if, if there's a little bit more interaction on this, or if we could set up some alternative mechanism. I really would like that. Um, so there we go. So questions. Why don't we talk to each other? Um, and how can we make it better? So does anybody want to contribute on this? I have a mic. Um, so thoughts. How, how can we build a community? Uh, I don't know if you've got any, any magic uh, ideas on this. Anybody? Burn it. So from where I stand, um, I think there's a big problem for AOSP, and that problem is called Google. <laughs> <laughs> and what is really needed is a uh, more open project that, uh, that follows AOSP closely, that copies every line of code from AOSP, that, uh, but that is more useful as a, as a standalone project. So if you try to put AOSP on your phone, you will find that you cannot really use it because it's missing even basic features like an email client. And there are open source tools that can fill in all the gaps. Uh, I'm using an ungoogled phone uh, right now and not really missing anything. But what is really needed is putting AOSP in all those projects that, uh, that turn it into something that is actually useful uh, together. 
and then try to build a community around that while also trying to be somewhat less ignorant about community issues uh, than the upstream AOSP maintainers. And of course the idea there would be to not really fork AOSP, we'll, uh, keep all the code that is there uh, as it is in AOSP, ju uh, just pull it in and uh, build a couple of extensions around it that, uh, that are pulled in through a different manifest. And maybe having the completely usable system that, uh, will already help more, attract more community members. It isn't that more or less what Linear JS do already? In a way it is. My, uh, my criticism of Lineage OS is uh, that they try to fork it too much. Mm -hmm. There's quite a bit of divergence from the code base. Uh, there's no way whatsoever that all the changes that go in there will ever be merged back into AOSP. Mm -hmm. So what I am suggesting is kind of similar, but to, uh, trying to stay closer to the AOSP code base, to, uh, trying to uh, upstream patches uh, that make sense. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, the issue with, with forking, I mean, we, we, we for sure could do that. AOSP is open source. We can fork it anytime we like. Um, but then once you've made the fork, then what do you do? That's always the point where it falls to, to pieces. Because you have to follow uh, the, the uh, AOSP because everybody wants the sub, uh, cap capability, compatibility with the, uh, the later versions of Android. You can't just stick with, you know, uh, Android 4.4 KitKat, which actually is my favorite version of Android. Um, but no, you, you've, got to, you've got to keep on going forward. So it, it's, it's a great idea. I I've, I've fully support it, but it needs, uh, it needs quite a lot of effort behind it to, to maintain it. Right. That's why I think it needs to be brought up at a session like this for, to see Absolutely, if people yes. are interested. Um, so if anybody wants to, to do that, I'm, I'm totally with you. Yeah. In fact, to some extent, I have done it. The, the code uh -huh. thread is lying around on a Git server in my cellar, so it just needs more people to look at it and maybe a better place to host it. Okay. Well, if you can, po if you can post a, a link to that or, or, or tell me and I'll write it on the, on the slides, um, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. We'll do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you scribble it down, I'll, I'll put it on the, on, on the screen. Okay. Super. Yes. Um, so from so I I come from also like the Google free Android um, community, and from my point of view, like contributing to AOSP, it's it isn't not really clear how to do that or if you can even do that, and um, when you maybe find the right Garrett uh, whatever project and you submit a patch and then it just sits there for seven years and the bug is still unfixed. <laughs> um, so that is, I think, a huge problem. And then you have the various, like LineageOS is one fork um, that maintains their own tree. They're also quite closed. I don't know anyone from that community. <laughs> That's a good point as well. So uh, you know, it'd be great if Lineage OS, if anybody who happens to be watching this, uh, were to join this community, or at least uh, be a little bit more open. And hey then, guys. Yeah. And there's various um, other projects that build on top of Lineage or AOSP, um, other custom ROMs, other p companies that sell phones with uh, less Google integrated into Android, and they all maintain their own like framework trees tracking AOSP or whatever AppStream they have, and then they have a bunch of patches and a bunch of bug fix patches, and then you kind of move them around Garrett instances, like they picked that from this one, and we also need this bug fix, and it's all a mess, and it sometimes or mostly never makes it up to AOSP because it's too complicated, and so I don't have any solutions, I just have problems, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I hear you and I'm not going to have a complete solution either, but maybe a quick suggestion. Uh, most of the Git projects in AOSP have a file called owners, which has a list of uh, usernames who are allowed to merge into that particular Git project. Um, so typically when you upload a change to Garrett, it doesn't get assigned to anybody, which is horrible and there should be an auto-assign. 
um, but you can figure out from that file who has the permission to, to make that decision. So, you know, assign it to them, maybe send them an email if they don't respond, but at least there's, there is a list of, of maintainers somewhere. It's not much, but at least something. Okay, that'd be cool. <coughs> and maybe just to add to that, like, it, like I, I guess even if you would do that, like with some projects, maybe you would want, want to get your, your patches merged in because of, like the product timelines or other things that are happening behind the scenes. It's not, it's not just because we're assholes, but um, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but like um, maybe in like instances like this, having a prioritized community list of like, here are the biggest pain points with the CLs or like bugs or like some sort of description and then using this as the venue to get like the top two or three or mm -hmm. five uh, fixed might be interesting. Okay. Uh, other thoughts, I guess? Anyone? So adding on top of what David just said, and nowadays get it automatically assigned the owners. I've tried it a few times. So the owners get assigned automatically. With the new version of Garrett, maybe. Yeah, I don't think it does it for all the projects, but yeah, it does for some. That's true. So I'm just making a note here. I'll, I'll, I'll be with you in just a moment. I, I have a question, and the and, uh, question is sort of like, what are the projects that people feel like they need to modify the most or have most changes against? And then the follow-up would be, uh, why is that? Is it because the projects are not designed in a way in which you could interface quite easily, or is it because functionality is missing? Uh, so I guess from my point of view, the things would be, uh, so basically the low level stuff. So bug fixes to house, bug fixes maybe to the Bluetooth stack, which is somewhat buggy in places. Um, basically I, it'd be really, really great to, to at least to start with if we were just able to fix bugs, uh, and have it, have a, a workflow and a strategy for doing that. I mean, that, that, that helps anyone, everyone, and it's, uh, it should be pretty much a no-brainer. The, the problem is, of course, that the, the, uh, the internal team developing Android are probably working on a different code base to the one we're working on. So there's always going to be some mismatch. Uh, but there is, a, there is a kind of solution to that, which um, I think John Stoltz recommended, is that um, there is a, a period which he called the merge window directly after the release of the next Android release. Uh, and before they start the next uh, version. Uh, so that time, sort of September, October-ish time is probably the best window to get stuff merged upstream because the Android developers are kind of merging their stuff into main at that point and they're, they're much more, it's much easier for them to, to merge in external changes. So another idea then, go for the merge window, do stuff September, October. Does anybody else have experience with that, Amit? Have you tried um, different different periods? Does it work better at some times of the year than others? So our changes are very small in nature. So we don't try to push too many changes to yeah, external yeah. projects. It's like 10, 15, at max 50 lines of code, just the bug fixes. So our experience with AOSP is rather good. Uh, maybe it's because we have been involved with AOSP for last 10 plus years. So I don't know if that helps. You know, the contributions and other things. Uh, but this merge window thing is, I've heard that too. That, But sometimes uh, if you do it just uh, at the time the release is dropped, then it takes about a week for the things to settle down. But mm -hmm. if you try to sync or download, uh, sorry, sync or build, it doesn't even build at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so even they are still free because uh, merging Android release tag in AOSP uh, it gets very complicated for certain mm -hmm. projects because as you mentioned that for the release they are working on a totally different code base and it may not align with AOSP as such and there could be merge issues and 
we have run into issues where it takes about two or three weeks for things to settle down and okay now the AOSP is bootable. Okay. Stay. But there, there, there's still a period I think once that settling has happened before they basically uh, take a snapshot of Maine and then start the next round of development which I guess happens towards the end of the year. So th there must be a period when, when, when yeah. the code bases are kind of a little bit more in, in sync. Uh, may, maybe, maybe somebody at Google should kind of publish this. this. May, maybe this should be made to kind of common knowledge. Seems like a reason. Uh, maybe they get too many patches that way though. So we should keep it quiet. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Otherwise I want to move on to uh, another topic. Well, actually not quite, but... Um, yeah, maybe I'll just add to that a little bit. I think um, well, two, two things was, one of them was, um, I think, Chris, you mentioned that um, Googlers might be working on a different source base yeah. at given times. Um, that might be true for kind of the more product-oriented Git repositories, kind of UI and application level. But it's definitely not true for the lower level layers of the stack, right? The kernel, SE Linux, all the kind of base init scripts, all of that is developed directly in AOSP uh, and actually merges into the internal tree from there. But right, are so they working on the master branch or are they working on the, on, on the master branch? That's on master. Okay. Um, so those low, low, lower layers, we're seeing the exact same thing as you do. Okay. Um, and on the Timelines, um, yes, September is usually the, the drop of the, the, the latest uh, release. Um, but that is after some period of stabilization. Yeah. Um, so especially if we're talking about these lower layers, they're usually developed in AOSP around, you know, maybe one to two quarters earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so winter is usually the busiest time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then things start to stabilize. Gradually. Okay, right. So that would argue for maybe targeting uh, late spring, early summer as the uh, as a good time to, yeah. to merge. Okay, interesting. Okay, okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, ideas for making it better. So I want to kind of move on a little bit away from the. Uh, the interaction with Google and think more about the interaction uh, between us developers. And so I've got a blatant plug here, which I guess you guys are aware of this, but let's do it anyhow. Uh, the, uh, the meetup. Um, so this is something I put together just over a year ago um, with the aim of creating some kind of community. And it was, it was a bit of a shot in the dark, um, but it, it's something I've been thinking about doing for, for years and years. And I, I, I keep thinking to myself, somebody's gonna do this. If I wait long enough, somebody will do it. And then I finally realized that actually, um, it's gonna have to be me. So um, I actually put this together. It, it's a little bit amateurish. I'm, I'm not the most organized person in the world for doing this kind of stuff, to be honest. Um, so I put this stuff together and it is, um, a meetup, so it's an online meetup because you can never get enough people together in one place to make it work as an in-person meetup. Um, but it seems to be quite successful. We typically, I mean, the, the group has 350 members right now. Um, the meetups would typically have 30, 35 people turn up online. And um, I, you know, many of the faces here have, have, have been present there and uh, uh, I, I very much appreciate that. So this, I think, is, uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the way it's gone. Um, it's, it's been more, more successful than, than, than I, might, I feared it might be. Um, and it's turning into quite a good resource here. I'd like to somehow publicize this. So at the moment, I just have a list of past talks. Um, this needs kind of organizing and kind of categorizing a bit. And also, when I look at the, um, uh, the stats of the videos on, uh, on uh, YouTube, um, yeah, we don't get a lot of hits, to be honest. Like the, the most popular talk only has about 300 views. So uh, I'd like some ideas of how do we get this information out. People ought to be, there's some good stuff there. There ought to be more people watching this stuff. So uh, I'll open that up in a moment. 
Um, but the other, the other thing I'd like to uh, look at is that this is great. It happens every, uh, every two months and a bunch of people get together and we, we chat for a couple of hours about this and that and it, it, it all goes really nicely. Um, but at the end of that, you know, it, it kind of shuts down and then nothing happens until the next uh, meetup. Now, okay, that's the nature, nature of meetups. But what I was looking for is, is some kind of thing where we could keep the ball rolling in, in between the, 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 the meetups, some kind of community. So uh, if anybody has any ideas about that, again, that would be very, very useful and I'm very happy to uh, kind of work on that. So first point then, how do we make this stuff more, 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 no, more known? So I'm part of another community which does pretty much the same thing. So yeah. the first thing would be to merge maybe similar initiatives to begin with. Yeah, sure. So I, I think you are also part of that IRC channel, right? AOSP hyphen developers. I am. I was looking for the link to it. Yeah. So it isn't on this page, which is a mistake. Yeah, carry on. I'll, I'll find the link. So what that uh, project does is, so right now it is mostly phone specific. So a bunch of people trying to run a AOSP and write open source project, not the release tag. So the, the AOSP version on form factor devices, on phones. So I know that they are running it on SDM845 SOC, which is Qualcomm couple of them uses it for SDM 600 series phones as well. And the reason they are doing it is because free Reno, right? The graphics is open. You can run AOSP, you can run upstream kernel. And post market OS is something which is different than AOSP, but we, I mean, not me, but there are a bunch of developers who are, uh, you know, uh, twin timing between AOSP and uh, post market OS uh, development. So we get to share the features which are being supported on both sides of the uh, ecosystem. So maybe there's a good opportunity here to collaborate on your project and ASP mainline project or any other project if there are any. And this is just yeah, phone specific, right? Uh, I'm hoping that should, because you have, if you have seen my talk this morning, the dev board requirements in AOSP is getting very strict nowadays. So That's should we expand this project to include the dev boards as well? This project, yes. I mean, uh, so this plus your one and throw in development boards in the mix. So this one only so talks th th about... This is, John, this is John's uh, idea, page, yes. which looks yes. very similar to my page. I know, exactly. I apologize. That I did steal a lot of his ideas. <laughs> no. So I'm saying that yeah, these two projects, when I mean, you both are talking about the same thing, right? Building a community around AOS people using AOSP on their devices, be it development board, be it phones, tablets, whatever device they could find. I, I mean, it would be really great if we could have more dev boards, more embedded uh, conversations on, on this. So, I mean, uh, essentially, this is mostly uh, uh, about the, uh, the IRC channel, I think. So if we scroll down a little bit, come chat with us. Does this work? I think that works. So I think, okay, it's not work. Uh, yeah, so we, we should definitely, so one, one thing I never, uh, one thing I have not set up is any kind of uh, IRC or chat or whatever, and that's a big mistake on my part. Um, so maybe we should come together. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, I did kind of, I, I, I spoke briefly with uh, John Stoltz at uh, Plumbers um, last, uh, last October, whenever it was. And we kind of said we'd do something, and we both said, yeah, that's a really good idea, and then neither of us, me in particular, uh, didn't follow through on that. So I will take that 
I will send an email to John tonight and say, uh, maybe we can kind of do more than just cross-link and actually uh, uh, do, do, you know, do something together. Um, but yes, and, and also uh, as a follow-up to that, I really would like to do more kind of embedded Android. So I, I define embedded Android as being Android not on a phone. So um, I, as we all know, Android ends up in all kinds of weird places. Um, in pizza ovens, I happen to know run, run Android, and um, Garmin use it in their, in their uh, navigation systems for all their yachts. That's, that's all running Android, and security cameras and all kinds of stuff. So there are thousands and thousands of products out there running Android, embedded Android, uh, that kind of nobody really knows about. Um, and I, I, I speak to people doing these things, and they all have the same problems. They all kind of, you know, how do we build a thing? How do we get the platform to work? How do I access the GPIOs? Um, how do I, uh, how do I uh, add in a SPI or an I2C device and, and talk to that from my app? Um, you know, all the kind of basic stuff that should all come together, I think. Because, you know, like it or not, this is how Android is used. And it's, uh, it's kind of, in, in a lot of people's minds, it's kind of a replacement for Windows CE. So Windows CE is kind of, you know, it's dead. What are you going to use instead? Android. That's the way the world goes. Um, okay, so, okay, so we've got something positive there. So I'll get in contact. We'll see if we can do a bit more together on these two, uh, two projects. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. So th this is this is me being lazy. So I, I set up a Slack workspace. Turns out Slack is a really bad tool for this kind of thing. I need to get rid of that. Sorry, Slack, but it just doesn't work. Uh, mostly because unless you pay them uh, big dollars, they they the uh, it, it you know the, the messages are deleted after ninety days, which is a bit silly. Well, okay, from my point of view. Um, oh yeah, and a quick plug, as you probably all know, uh, the next meetup is uh, 12th, which is only a few weeks away, and actually I don't, haven't got any talks arranged, so um, come to me afterwards if you've got any ideas for, uh, for really interesting talks. Otherwise, I'll have to chase you up individually. Uh, what is AOS, AAOS actually? Ah, okay, that's a secret. Um, <laughs> so that is Android Automotive OS. So it's uh, AOSP on Android. And it's one of those cases where the, the acronym AAOS is harder to say than Android Automotive or Android, Automo or Android Automotive OS. Um, but yeah, it's the thing that, that uh, you know, um, Polestar put into their, their Polestar 2 cars and such. And uh, the meeting is virtual or in a physical location? It's, it's virtual. Yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't work um, any other way because there are people from all over Europe and from India and from USA and all kinds of, all kinds of weird places. Yeah, I'm also part of a community of open source Android developers, but mostly on the like system framework UI to app level. So, but there's some overlap, I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, the. The reason I called it the AOSP and AAOS meetup is I did not want Android to be in the name. Because as soon as I put Android out there on meetup.com, I'll get tons of application developers piling in. And I, this is not about the applications, this is about the OS. So that's why it's, it's named slightly obscurely in that way. So this is very much the, the operating system. OK. Um, Moving on from that, okay, next topic. So how do you find out about AOSP? What are good resources for AOSP? Um, so the obvious one is source.android.com, but as we know that, well, I mean, source.android.com is kind of great, but it's also a little bit random, and a lot of the stuff is out of date. So where else do you go? I would say Kettlefish Can you, can you, uh, Microphone. So I would say cuttlefish git logs. Okay, that's another I mean, place. You find I'd very good information there. Why they are doing the change, and then you can realize whether you want that change 
in your device or not. So this is once you already have a device set up and if you want to do some modifications or keep track of what is happening in AOSP framework level, which you may want to change or incorporate in your device config. So I have always find cuttlefish uh, git logs very useful in that case. Okay, that's, that's great. Because I mean, um, a related thing to that, which I think I'll come to in a moment or two, is if you're if you're porting Android to to new hardware, what do you use as a, as a reference platform? Um, so I, I've got you know some something Pi board which somebody's just given me, and I want Android to work on that. Where do I start? Where, 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 what's the configuration I should I should uh, kick off with? Cuttlefish would it be or? Pixel? I would start with Cuttlefish. I would start with Cuttlefish. Yeah. So I mean we don't do that ourselves because we have a device <laughs> config, so we just keep piling things on the same. We reuse the same device configs. Mm -hmm. But if I have to start on a new board today, then I would start with Cuttlefish. Cuttlefish, yeah. Because there are a lot of build configurations, which are some of them are very legacy, uh, 10 years, 15 years old, uh, board config file, board config variables, mm -hmm. and which I still see them getting used in certain board config files. But those configs are no longer valid. But people are using it because someone has used it once, and people keep following the same set of configurations. And we were talking to some of the cuttlefish developers once, and they told us that uh, they do keep track of what build variable is currently being used and what is being deprecated. Mm -hmm. So if something which they're using in their board config file or device MK files or any kind of common configuration, mm -hmm. which you can make use of, then you can rely on that. Okay, that's good to know. Because I, I must admit, when I'm looking through uh, board configuration files, quite often you look at stuff and you think, that doesn't do anything anymore. Why, why is that still there? And that's because they just copied and pasted from somewhere else. Um, exactly, yeah. So I didn't work on it for a while, but I usually looked at the latest um, Google phone that mm -hmm. um, for, for Android 10, I think it was the Pixel or Pixel 2 or something. And I started from there and copied the stuff from there mm -hmm. because I figured it would be the most up-to-date and current way to, to work with it. Hmm. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so where to get information coming back to this. Anybody know of any good kind of blogs or anybody who is writing stuff about AOSP? Um, apart from things we've already spoken about. So you, you can go to Stack Overflow and that there's, there's some random stuff there. Some of it's good, some of it not so. So I find the Google groups uh, helpful too at times. You do? I've never got an answer on a Google group. <laughs> Maybe I'm asking the wrong questions. This is a s strange one, but there's a, there's a guy named Michal who keeps probably scouring through the garrets all the time. And I, oh, actually yeah, I, learn, I actually learn a lot about new features from his tweets. You're right, actually, yes. Uh, Michel Raman? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I, I do follow him, and uh, he does come up with some really good stuff. I, I've never met him in, in person, which would be an interesting thing to do. And he is on Telegram too, and Telegram posts are more elaborated compared to tweets. Okay. Oh, okay, that didn't work. Um, okay, another bugbear of mine then is when I do my repo sync and whatever, how do I know that what I've got is a good version of AOSP? Um, because quite often you download VOSP and it doesn't build or it builds but doesn't boot or whatever. And this is especially an issue with the Android Automotive stuff, AOSP. AOSP obviously is working on a different release cadence to everyone else. And so trying to get an AOSP build to work, sorry, trying to get an Android Automotive build uh, to build and boot is a little bit hit and miss, in my opinion. Does anybody, so how, how do I know? So I, I guess to, to simplify the question a little bit, when I look at the build tags uh, for the Android manifests, 
how do I know what they all do? They all say, oh, this, is, this is updates for Pixel 7, this is Pixel 6, and whatever. What does that all mean? How do I know? How do I decode uh, those build tags and know which ones I should navigate to? Anybody have any magic here? So you're talking about the builds from ci.android.com, right? Or I was talking about the builds from, um, from yes, from, from googlesource.com, just the, just the canonical. Um, now I'm talking about the pre-builds or you're doing a local build? I'm, well, I'm talking about the AOSP source code. But the local builds, right? Yeah. So when they so do yeah. a repo sync, repo sync uh, when they do a repo init and, and repo sync, right. when they do the repo init, you know, what, 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 what should I, what, what branch should I give there? So I'm mostly on master branch. And what we end up doing is at some point, we were maintaining a list of known good manifests. Right, that's what we need. <laughs> so Probably. we were doing it, but then we real so uh, after that we pivoted to having daily builds. Mm -hmm. So now what we do is that if something breaks today, I'll go to my daily build page, download the two days older build, and see if the issue is still there or not. If it is not, then I know that this AOSP bug is being introduced in last two days. And with our daily builds, we publish the manifest files. So I have a manifest file of two days earlier, two days, which was there two days ago, mm -hmm. and today's manifest file. Uh, then it's like a manual thing, right? Okay, which projects got changed then, you know. Okay. So if I'm gonna solve your problem, but maybe a tool that you might not be aware of, um, there's the ci.android.com where we do continuous builds mm -hmm. uh, with some basic testing on Cuttlefish, I think. So at least it will tell you whether this is a build that boots. Um, and when you open the artifacts for the for that particular build, it has a manifest.xml, which is a copy of the of the manifest, but it has inserted the commit hashes of the individual <laughs> Git projects that were used for that particular build. Mm -hmm. so, so you can sync to that and you should have the exact same checkout as was used for that particular known good build. Okay, that's cool. Um, it's in the artifacts. So I uh, only got another couple of minutes left, but um, so following off on that, I, I've, I've always kind of avoided the master branch because it's unstable and I'm not quite sure what it's going to build or, one, or whatever. But also it's not, so as, as I'm teaching Android, people don't really want to know about master, they want to know about the currently released version, which currently be Android 13 or maybe even earlier versions. A lot of people are still working on 11 or even 10. So I tend to want to know, uh, I tend to work with, with, with tagged releases because that's, that's, that, that has version numbers that people recognize. If I start teaching people about master, well, for one thing, I'd have to update my slides every day, which I don't want to do. Um, but it's, it's not stable enough for most, uh, most of my customers. Okay. And we have a couple of things. Okay, we probably don't have time to do this. The grumpy developer. So I, I had planned to do this, but I think we've run out of time. Uh, I was gonna ask you to give, a, give me your, your, your favorite uh, moans about, uh, about Android. So we have time for maybe two. So anybody want to, yeah, what, 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 what's, what's the worst thing about AOSP? No, nobody wants to commit. <laughs> Bernard. Okay, so this is not really about AOSP as a whole, but for, for example, Bionic is a very interesting project that would be useful <laughs> outside of Android as well, but it's pretty much impossible to rip it out of the Android tree to build it in the context of some other Linux system that happens to use Bionic as well. Oh, I've never tried mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah, I've tried doing it as part of researching different Lipsy implementations, but, mm. uh, but it's, nah, it's certainly doable if you invest a lot of time, but then five days later they modify the build system again and then it's broken again. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, no, that's... So it would be really nice if the, some of those uh, projects that are part of Android uh, could be modified to make them more usable outside of Android as well. I think that's true, and I, I, I think we we're kind of coming to the end here, but I, I, my, my final plea would be to make Android more modular. Android is this huge, enormous monster which kind of gobbles you up, 
Um, so if, if there's one thing uh, Google could do to improve uh, Android, they could split it into smaller pieces and make it more modular and more, more, more rebuild, rebuildable and so on. Okay, um, so I think we're out of time there. So thank you all very much for contributing. That's been really great. And um, yeah, don't forget, we've got one more talk on the AOSP track. Um, Chris Hayes from Memfold is giving his talk on debugging Android uh, just before the closing game. So at whatever that is, I still haven't looked at the time, 16.40, I think. Meanwhile, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference and uh, see you around. <laughs>